So yeah, surprise, surprise, um, white guy with a beard who likes um, good coffee. Talking about VR, yay. <laughs> But if you, if you listen to my accent, you realize that um, I come from somewhere far away <laughs> called South America. Hey, sorry. I'm gonna plug it in now. Yay. And um, presentation. Go. Here we go. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, so in South America, I grew up in a, in a city in the, in the desert in Chile. Uh, we, we receive things, right? We don't produce things other than copper and earthquakes. Um, so I don't really know what I'm doing in VR. I have no idea. What I do know is what, I, what I've done, where I've been, and um, and I can take that uh, as my starting point, as my foundation to move forward in this funny little thing that, that we are discovering together. That is my Cartesian approach to life. So I'm gonna show you what I've done, yeah? How I got here and, and, and perhaps that can help us all, including myself, understand what we're doing today. My, uh, my career uh, as a visual artist had a very strong and significant part of it uh, during performance art. So what you see in there is um, a series of uh, karaoke parties we, we put inside a, a gallery space. So the, uh, the gallery space had a bubble inside, and inside that bubble we put a, um, the lounge room of our squad house that we were living together in, the, the, the arts collective that I was part of. So what you see there, it's a bubble with a lounge room, and people would go inside the bubble, and they would sing karaoke. <laughs> like this. Yeah. So prepare yourselves for tonight. Now, the uh, karaoke, of course, wasn't just your re regular karaoke. It was prepared by artists. I guess now it's time. <laughs> anyway, we would, uh, we would have our parties inside the gallery, yeah? <laughs> and that was what we were doing those years. Um, another series uh, of, of performances that we were doing were boxing fights. So that one there was... Um, Again, like a party event, like an art event, in which we, we would invite people to see fights of different characters. Of course, the, the fights were real. Real punches, real people, those, the, the two Santa Claus there. Um, Santa Clay, there. <laughs> are, are real boxers. And by the same token, we also did a series of boxing fights between artists. So what you see in there is a painter, Porti. Uh, and the printmaker, Victoria, going at each other. Like I said before, they were real fights. Yeah, they were actually fighting each other, punching each other. And, you know, to try to invite someone to perform a fight takes a bit of convincing. Um, so to get there, to be able to bring people to the ring and, and go like, you know what, it's actually fun if you let it happen, if you get into it. You have to do it yourself. So um, one of the first fights, one of the fir first series, was myself on this corner, the, this corner on the right, to what used to be my good friend Luis. Yeah, used to be until that fight. Yeah. <laughs> um, just a bit of information that I'm going to deploy right now is that the referee there is my father. Yeah. None of us had any idea of, of the, you know, no training in fighting. My dad has no idea of, you know, being a referee, you can tell. At some point he starts lecturing me, you know, and I can hear anything. When you're in a fight, real or staged, this is the staged, but the 
punches are real. Like we got bruises, we got blood coming from our noses. Um, you know that surrounding environment, the, there, there's a crowd at the back, there's some lights, um, it just blurs out. You don't see that, you don't understand what's going on, you just have this tunnel vision that calls for your complete attention. What you see on the floor is a, is a canvas that's being painted as we fight, or like um, just mentioned before, as we danced. And as we dance, uh, the soles of our feet are soaked in paint. So we were making this um, depiction, this, this uh, capturing the moment of the fight, and turn that into uh, a painting. So that's the end show. On the well, on your left, you can see the pictures and the videos captured from the series of boxing fights. On the right, you can see the, the triptych that was the ring, the, the canvas on the ring, put up as a, um, as a painting. You can see the, the footsteps of the two contenders, the two corners, plus the referee, which is the yellow paint. That's you know, um, your, your, my punk approach to being creative. Of course, um, you don't fund your life by doing these things. So I had a daytime job as well, uh, being a multimedia designer. One of the biggest challenges in, in my career as a multimedia designer was to uh, be the integrator for the um, Museum of Memory and Human Rights in Chile. Incredibly complicated uh, technical challenge because the, the mission of the, um, of the museum is to not just show the history of what, happens, uh, what happened in Chile between late 60s to early 90s, the time of the dictatorship and around uh, that era. It wasn't just showing history, but also being able to capture history, to be like a, like a porous membrane that could welcome the, the audiences and le letting them share their artifacts, their mementos, their stories. Uh, so my mission there was to help creating the, uh, the interfaces, the di digital interfaces to show content as well as to capture content. Um, it was quite a challenging endeavor, not just for, for the, you know, the amount of, of things that I had to take care of, but um, most Chileans have a very strong connection with, with what happened during the dictatorship years. I don't think that anyone went through it unscathed. And for me, uh, I have a very particular connection with the stories that were in there, in that museum. Uh, just to give you an example of what sort of um, uh, devices we were setting up, you can see the installation on the upper left has um, testimonials by victims of torture. You could see them randomly being displayed. And at the same time, in front of you, almost invisible, but not quite, there is this bed frame, which is a real bed frame that was used to torture people, to give them electric shocks. It was a tremendous challenge, as, as I said. Uh, it was very, very, very big turning point in my life because I had to not just work technically, but also had to be part of history. And uh, the museum stayed open, I mean, open in, in the summer, the south summer 2010. Uh, stayed open for two months. Everyone was very happy, very cheerful, until February 2010, um, an 8.8 .8, uh, earthquake hit Chile and brought everything down. Uh, all the artifacts, all the things that I mentioned before, all the physical objects uh, ended up on the floor. Luckily enough, if you can call that luck, the, um, all the, the audiovisual and information systems were backed up, so it was just information. All the, 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 the oral recording, all the images were saved somewhere else, and there were information that we were, we were able to keep. So getting the, 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 the signal right that, that that was it for me. Um, I did my best effort. I put all the doc documentation on the server, all the software together, and I made my way to Australia, which is where I live now. In Australia, I worked two years as a picture hanger. Yeah, you can see there that I'm, you can actually see that I have my eyes closed and that picture that I'm putting is like sideways. But anyway, <laughs> while I was doing that, <laughs> 
while I was doing the, the hanging there, uh, of course, I got the chance to be to, to enter people's houses and, and understand the way they lived, and uh, we, we very close to you know things like this, like photography collections, which are you know things that you give from your your family album, all the way to big vi um, valuable pieces of art. Um, so while I was doing that, I got the chance of understand how um, much uh, a safe distance I had to tackle my own history, you know, the own, my own story, which was being part of a family in which my father was part of a military dictatorship. Up until I got to Australia, I will, was not able to have that distance and to be able to tackle that, that part of my history. Back when I was doing the, the boxing fights, I was trying to understand violence and historiography and identity. How do we connect with each other or not? How do we make those relationships affect each other? And, and all the while bringing this third party that was my father, tr trying to see what he would do in the middle of that situation of violence. It's a very, very long work, uh, walk around to, to get to this point. You know what I wanted to talk about? Is this, being part of this story. So when I got to Australia, um, I really got into the chance of creating Ascent, which is this VR documentary about my father and our, our relationship over the years. All through that, the, the process of understanding that, that was my key question. What is the difference between the soldiers in this picture, heavily loaded, and my father? Right? If you don't know that man, that there is another soldier. But for me, that's a, a very heavily charged emotional picture. And I'm going to show you just a quick clip of what Ascent is about. We're looking back to 1973. This is Santa Lucia Hill. Going through your descriptions and photographs, this is what I imagine it looked like. Right on this spot, you have just been notified of a court-martial taking place up the hill where the shooting range You should have gone up there immediately. And you did go right away. But today, I want you to take the time you didn't take back then and stay with me for a little longer. Let's look around and I'll show you a few things before you go. Look at the guys at the end of the stairs. That's us. So what we're doing now is we started a company called Vertov. Yes, uh, um, an op to Ziga Vertov. And, um, and what we're pushing for, our philosophy in doing VR, is the operation as a, as a device to tell the story, as a device to understand who the character is. In most of the, ca the cases, the, most of the time, the character is the user. So we're proposing this. What you do is what you get. You understand the character, you understand the story by doing things, by, by engaging in operations. Uh, and uh, all, all through the year, you're gonna find, you will find these two new pieces that we're presenting. Uh, we just uh, premiered Tribe um, The Turning Forest at Tribeca. And in June, we're gonna be premiering Easter Rising, Voice of a Rebel at Sheffield Documentary Festival. Thanks.